The government has released its first report card on its set of self-imposed targets, and it doesn't make for rosy reading. Statistics have gone backwards in more than half of the measures, but it's most evident in law and order. Senior political correspondent Jenna Lynch joins us now. Jenna, what's the government going to do about this? Mm. Yeah, another crime crackdown was the antidote to the disastrous data today. Yesterday, Christopher Luxon was up in Auckland. So, so hang on. Their pledge was a crime crackdown. That doesn't seem to be working. So the answer that they've given, according to Jenna Lynch, is we're going to do another crime crackdown. Hang on, that's, but that was, shouldn't, hmm, maybe I'm missing something. Heralding that crime had come down in the CBD, but all the while he was sitting on this latest data from the most recent crime victimisation survey, which showed a 30 thousand increase in violent crime across the country. That is the exact opposite of the 20,000 reduction target that National has set itself in this area. It's explained. You okay with that, Joey? You look like you're about to explode. You all right? Oh, no, this is great. The system is proceeding as predicted. So basically they said they'd reduce by about 20,000. They've increased by 30,000. But, you know, party of law and order and all that bullshit area it's explained it away by saying that there is a lag in by saying that labor bad labor bad in this data and some of that reflected in this latest report dates back to july 2022 but it is this very same survey this data that the government has decided to mark itself on that very same survey ruled that there was no real statistical increase in violent crime between 2018 and 2023 it's very different data than national used to label labor soft on crime <laughs> when it was last in government, but it now, is are you, hang on, Jenna, are you saying that that nationals kind of cherry pick data to make Labour look bad? Really? I find that hard to believe, Chewy. You know that that doesn't seem right. Well, they wouldn't do that. Surely they wouldn't do that. Couldn't imagine it. Couldn't nah. imagine rejecting any assertions that is cherry picked the survey for political purposes, calling that suggestion cynical. I said to you there are six-year targets in 2030 where we're going to report on them every quarter. Sometimes they'll go backwards, sometimes they'll go forwards. Um, but the bottom line is I'm interested in results and outcomes. I'm, in, I'm not interested in the petty politics of it. I want to get a different set of outcomes in this country. We cannot carry on the way that we're doing. We Notice again, and Chewy, I'm stealing your line there. He didn't say better outcomes. He said different outcomes. Right? Just be aware. He said different outcomes. So much, much worse would still be fulfilling this criteria. Bottom line is I'm interested in results and outcomes. I'm in, I'm not interested in the petty politics of it. I want to get a different set of outcomes in this different. country. We cannot carry on the way that we're doing. We said we would turn the place around. That's what we're going to do. And it will be hard because we've got a massive trajectory of results going against us and momentum continuing to go the wrong way. Now, in response to the numbers going the wrong way, the government today announced that it had taken its proposed changes to sentencing to Cabinet and will introduce them to the House this week. It includes things like capping the maximum discount that judges can apply to sentences for... So again, experts, judges, people who have known the system for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and this government's going to come in and go, we know better? Honestly adding factors to 40% and uh, stopping the use of repeat discounts for uh, the likes of youth or remorse in sentencing. It's also added a couple of new aggravating factors to sentencing, one of which is uh, adults who exploit children by aiding and abetting them to commit crimes. The other is for people who post their crimes online or live stream them. If that sounds familiar, it is because they're the last Labour government's changes to the Ram Raids Bill, that same government that national called soft on crime <laughs> oh chewy have at it my friend have at it i don't know whether luxon has has actually believed the shit that he's campaigned on that for some reason national are going to come in and solve crime because again it's never worked it's yeah. never worked a crime crackdown never works you end up with a whole bunch of people in jail you're spending money on that you're spending money on enforcement and then the criminals get more hardened and they go to crime university they come out and they do more crime 
and we end up with this cycle of criminals and their families and the, and the kids doing more crime. It just it turbocharges crime, but it's good for the votes. It's not the problem. Crime is not the problem. It's a feature. It's mm. a feature mm. that keeps them in mm. because there are people that read stories about crime and think that the only thing that is is, is being harsh is the only thing that stops it. But it didn't stop crime when we had the death penalty. It didn't stop crime when we chucked people in dungeons. It doesn't fucking work. Mm. But what does work is having work for people to do and ways to make their life better. But that's too soft and namby pamby and wishy washy. And people want to punish. Yeah. They want people yeah. to suffer. They, as long as it's not them on the on the wrong end of the boot. They are fine with it and they will vote for it every time. And Luxon fucking knows it.